All righty. Everyone, welcome to day two of Qubit Summit. Hopefully it is uh, slightly less eventful than yesterday's. Um, thank you very much for bearing with us through our technical issues. Hopefully today goes over the hitch. Um, starting off today, we have Ryan Halise and Fabian Deutsch, two of our Qubit maintainers, uh, talking about the, um, the long-awaited version one release. So I'll get off and leave it to those guys. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrew, and thank you very much to the team for fixing all the technical stuff just yesterday. So welcome. Uh, welcome to Qubit Summit. Um, it's great uh, to be here again. Um, and I'm here today. So my name is Fabian Deutsch. I'm an engineering manager over here at Red Hat and working on Qubit and Upstream. And uh, Red Hat is building a product on it called OpenShift Virtualization. And with me, I've got Ryan Hallisse, a software engineer from NVIDIA, who is uh, adopting Qubit and um, is also a Qubit maintainer. And, and in this role, and the two of us are speaking to you right now. So, um, hello. Let's start with me. So, um, we're here at Qubit Summit. And I mean, this session was intended to be uh, taking place on the first day. Um, so, let's recap, right? It's Qubit Summit. Um, Qubit has come a long way. Uh, and we want to see how far. I mean, we already saw some great sessions yesterday, but some amazing deep dives, um, which I was excited to see. Um, so how to develop Qubert over the course of last year. So let's look at the creators contributing content to Qubert. It's not only code, it's also about documentation, testing so much. We need so much attention on stability, right? So it's everybody who contributed to Qubert, and not only to Qubert slash Qubert, but also to associated projects. So I looked at a few of the dev stats that the uh, CNCF is creating. Um, and here, this is a simple one, right? It's wonderful to see how many forks and how many the forks is the orange line and how many stars, which is the green line, um, we got over the years. That's great. Um, I think that the number is secondary to me. To me, it's interesting too that we have a continued interest. Uh, the blue line marks, by the way, the number of issues that we have. And I think that's also reflecting that um, Qubit is being used differently, which then leads to uh, this increase of issues over the course of the year. You can also see the, um, the vertical lines, which are somewhat reddish. And you have a lot of them um, until like the end of the year. I mean, down here, we have like 2023 on the bottom right, but everything up to that point is 2022. And all these reddish lines are releases, right? So I think we were we were quite good at doing releases throughout the year. But there was a change, and we'll get to that in a minute. Um, something that stood out to me is actually the behavior in, in, in how reviews were done, right? We, we have many contributors. Um, I actually don't, I, I think I did not look up that number. But um, in this chart, what struck me is how well we 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 communicate, right? Um, there are a lot of issues. There are a lot of PRs. We have we have many PRs open, which is good and bad at the same time, right? Um, but at the same time, we definitely see that there's increased communication over the um, over PRs and comments on on issues, which is great. It also shows that there are like less of of list channels, right? To make sure that we really speak across or not ensuring it, but um, illustrating that we're speaking across uh, company boundaries, discussing the PRs. We heard about ARM yesterday. We heard from NVIDIA yesterday. And a lot of this work is happening, uh, taking place in upstream, uh, which is awesome. Um, this chart shows the 85 percentile from PRs from being open to merged. and. The nice thing here is I, I already mentioned that we have roughly, I think, 180 open PRs. And that number increased like a year ago. We were roughly like 100 to 150, roughly. Um, but despite this increase, and you can complain how long it takes to get a PR merged. But if we look at the data, right, how long it takes to get PRs. And by the way, this includes backports. It includes bug fixes. It includes everything, testing fixes. Uh, but the, the 85 percentile, at least, has been pretty stable um, over the course of three years, right? So look at starting in 2020. So it's been pretty stable and pretty low, right? So we've got 
low is always relative, right? So it's uh, taking roughly four days if we look at the last two years at least until it, from a PR being opened until it's getting merged. And that's nice, right? So despite an increase in in contributions and distance of PRs, we managed to keep the time to merge a PR um, pretty low. I should add for transparency, so please take a look at the stats yourself, that they are obviously outliers, right? We have some complex work going in or being here. TPM, for example, I see how long it's lingering around, right? The persistence for VTPM, which is awesome, but these are difficult problems. They naturally take um, a lot longer, but at the same time, it's great to see that there's so many other fixes which are so quickly to get in. So uh, we looked at the contributors, right? Who contrib or creators who contributed to Qbert. Let's take a brief look at the adopters because there were also some changes on this side. Um, this is a screenshot of our uh, source code management tool, uh, GitHub, and um, it's naming a few of the changes to the adopters file. And the reverse order, right? So the most recent addition is actually Deckhouse, which I think just announced their adoption of Kubert in one of their products. So congratulations for announcing this. I think it's just from this month. We had Trilio, um, who um, is active in the uh, in the backup space in, in in the Kubernetes ecosystem, and also added support for Kubert. And we've got the OS build operator by uh, the Flutter project, and we've got Puzzle E which is like a, um, a cloud cloud provider um, to to bring viewers um, um, to you on demand build on a, I don't know, minute minute or hourly fashion, um, which is nice because it's done through the Kubernetes API, API natively or in general natively through Kubernetes APIs. And lastly, there's also Killer Coder. And I think we've seen how Killer Coder took over from Catacoda. Uh, really good to see, and um, yeah, keep keep going, Kilagoda. I think it's great to see this this kind of tool for getting hands on stuff that's otherwise sometimes complex to set up. Beyond the adopters that disclosed themselves to um, the Kubert adopters file, I want to encourage everybody, right? If you're adopting Kubert, then share your story, right? Share what you're using Kubert for. This helps us as people who contribute to Kubert to also make decisions about features, right? To understand the use cases better. Um, so just looking at a number of the companies that contribute uh, to Kubert, right? So every developer is effectively trying to be mapped to a company and there's a huge mapping file where you can um, map yourself to a company. We see that we have Red and Google like leading this list, but let's, let's steer our view a little bit further down, right? We see a couple of companies that have emerged over the last year that that contributed code and that's great right we have amadeus with sap we've got kong uh, intel nvidia kubematic i mean you're with us for a long time arm sure howard right thanks for that session already uh suzy ibm and gitpod i always forget uh, who is mapped to gitpod and google and reddit as well so it's good to see this diversity of contributions and uh, yeah Let's keep this diversity and let's keep it going and growing. With all this, and I'm getting to the end of my part and giving Ryan uh, some time to prepare for his part, um, with this diversity in, in contributors, something that's I think also being, being brewing is to, um, to see that we extend or make our governance model more robust right we want the voices of everybody here we want to make sure that we make the right decisions for us as a project right not that it's useful so for so many we want to make sure that it's staying that way or it's even you know becoming even more useful for this it's important that us adopters or us contributors step up please step up please weigh in we want to see that the ownership uh, within Kubert can be distributed, right? Today we have a set of strong maintainers and thank you very much and approvers, um, but we want to put that on more shoulders. We need to see that we keep Kubert robust, that we multiply the knowledge, that we maintain the knowledge that it needs to build Kubert to extend it. I mean, we are for sure to some extent the feature development has, I wouldn't say flattened, but has come down, but we know we're at an end, right? We need to continue. We will have to continue to implement uh, features because we're a virtualization platform and virtualization is 
is still going strong. Confidential computing is just one of these buzzwords. It's actually more, th more than a buzzword that's been looming around that we need to get to. But in order to, to get there, in order to keep it stable, in order to make sure that we're professional on all ends, we want a strong governance around Qbert. And that can be is, is starting with approvers, but it's also going beyond it, for example, to organize events like this um, awesome Qbert Summit. So please step up. There are some PRs, like on Qbert Qbert, for example, to look at the, the Zix, right, that we have informally established to drive that further, to introduce the concept of SMEs, possibly, to maintain knowledge. But step up and reach out to us in case that you want to support us on the documentation side, on the testing side, um, and to be part of the team behind Qbert, right, beyond the code. Thanks. And with this, I'm, I'm handing it over to Ryan, We'll be putting a much stronger focus on on a possible version one that might be coming up. Over to you, Ryan. Thanks, Fabian. So I'm excited to share the news with everyone about the next Qvert release. So the community is targeting the next release to be v1. And this is really exciting for so many reasons. And what I want to do is I want to present with you a, a, a theme for V1. And, and that theme is about is aligned with Kubernetes. Next slide, please. So we're going to talk a little bit first about the schedule here for V1. So for March, this has already happened. So we have Kubernetes, we have uh, the 127 alpha 3 tag that has already happened. It was in the middle, middle of March. And uh, we have few things that have already occurred with Qbert. We've had a, a V060 alpha zero tag, and we've had some work already begin on the 127 provider. And um, this 127 provider, if you don't know, uh, uh, really just the provider work in general is, is critical for our success and how we do these releases. And really all this is, is we want to take bits, the new bits that Kubernetes offers us and makes available to us. And we want to lay them down in our CI and we want to test all our new PRs and everything against these new bits as soon as possible. And this kind of thing is important for our velocity and, and releasing. And so this work you'll see is a consistent theme across the calendar. So next slide, please. April. So this is exciting. This is we have KubeCon EU in April. We've got Kubernetes 127 release, and that's targeted for April 11th. And uh, for April, Qvert has a few things we, on our schedule, and this is the, the goal is to tag the, the V10 alpha one tag. And also as a goal is we want to have a 127 pre-submit job uh, available to us. And this is again, a, a, a job that if you've seen in the gates or if you've seen in one of the PRs, this is the opportunity for you to run this job on demand. Next slide, please. May. So May is, May is an important month for eventually getting to the point where we, we really stabilize these 127 jobs. And so you, again, like uh, I can't emphasize enough like the, how these 127 bits and having CI stable on these 127 bits. And so uh, for May, it's, it's all about stabilizing. And this means having the, the gates for 127 being voting and all the SIG lanes and, and having them available and ready and running against all PRs and having them voting. Okay, and next slide for the last month. So this is the last leg of the journey that, that we're targeting. So for V1, and this is uh, the exciting month of June where, where in, once we hit the summertime here, we, we want to hit the feature freeze. And this is this means that the, we want to branch off of main. We want to branch, we want to create a release, we want to branch off of main. And with it, um, there would be uh, two tags, that we, or two or more, we could say, release candidate tags. And depending on this, how, how stable they are, we would spend a little bit of time um, testing stability and eventually get to the point where, when we feel comfortable, after at least two tags, that we would do a, a 1 0 tag, and that would be this, this V1 release. And so the target for that is, is going to be end of June. OK, next slide. So I want to go back to my theme, and, and this is you know uh, more being more like Kubernetes, and for this V1 release, and, and so there's a number of ways that uh, that Kubert has already started being more like Kubernetes, and and some highlights here is we've already seen with the release cadence is a really big one, and so I've been showing this graph that the release cadence has changed, and this is 
been, if you probably looked at the 059 release, it has been an incredible accomplishment to see that being rolled out with the new cadence. And the, the thing I would highlight about this is that instead of the, the monthly release cadence that Cuber has been using for a long time now, it is going to be a, a three month cadence. This is going, or sorry, excuse me, a three release, three releases a year cadence. And this is going to be the same as what Kubernetes offers. So a way to think about this is Kubernetes is going to do release, then Qvert wants to follow up in a number of weeks and do a release of its own. So the second bullet point I have is, is having API graduation guidelines. This is something that's already uh, been worked on for a while and it's been available and circulated. And um, again, another area where you can see a lot of similarities between you know, stabilizing the API and, and what the guidelines are for actually contributing new APIs in, in Qvert and, and very much inspired by how, or the way Kubernetes does it. Design proposals. Um, this is another one where I encourage everyone in the community to, to use this it's, as a, it's a, it's a resource at your disposal where you can have access to you know, writing out your thoughts for a design and getting feedback from maintainers. And it's a way that you can get um, get your thoughts on paper and, and get maintainers' attention and, and, and try and push your feature along. And so I'd encourage people to, to use that as much as possible. Uh, release matrix. Uh, this one, what I'll say about this is, uh, is that really the, the, there's no change in branch support. Um, I, I think there's still some discussion to be had in terms of how releases get supported over time, but I think the highlight right now that I would, that I would want to say is that there's, there's no change in branch support. Release notes. So you've probably already noticed with the 059 release, there's a lot more release notes. And it makes sense, right? We've There's been more time that's gone by between releases, so we have picked up a lot more release notes. And so one of the things we'd like to address is uh, as part of this, this fee run release cycle is, is actually finding a way to curate this data so that it can be more consumable by end users uh, now that we have a lot more data. So there's an ongoing discussion about that. And so if you wanna participate, there's a link that is in the presentation where you can find the discussion and, and provide your input. And lastly, a deprecation policy. This is another area where there's been a bunch of ongoing discussion and uh, a lot of uh, I mean, the policy has really taken form. And uh, again, it's another area we can follow the link. And I would say, I think uh, I have so I have a picture is either the first or one of the first uh, APIs that I've seen deprecated that has been V1. And this is the virtual machine instance presets uh, API. And you can see there at the bottom, like in the picture that there's a little note about how you get a warning about this to be deprecated and, and removed in V2. I think I think this is in either 0.58 or 0.59. You'll, you'll see this with uh, when you use VMI presets. Next slide, please. Okay, how you can help with V1. So, so some checkpoints uh, that will occur on the community call. So, you know, attend the community call and you can hear about those and how the progress is going. Uh, you can follow along and, and, and obviously participate in the, in the mailing list. There'll be, I'm sure, as we get closer and we get some of these milestones, there'll be some discussions that will be brought up or any sort of, any sort of problems that occur, we will be, you know, voicing them on the mailing list. And so please participate as you see those discussions come up. Uh, the SIG release group, this is a, a group that was just recently formed. And, and if you're interested in, in all and in, in learning more about how this release process works, um, this group is, is where you want to go. And um, and if you want to participate, it's, we should re reach out to some of the, the owners in that group and see how you can help. And lastly, uh, voicing your opinion. And, and this link, this 8566 is a link to an issue. This is has a list of items that uh, we consider for the the, uh, the items that we want to have as part of this V1 release cycle. And so you'll see in that issue that there's a number of PRs and, and issues that are still open. So we're looking for, for more opinions on a lot of these topics. So I encourage everyone to, to take a look and, and provide your feedback. And, and that's will be a big help in how you can push V1 and so that it can meet your expectations. And next slide, I think we're on the last one. Yep, yeah. and so any questions for for people, please let us know. Thank you. I'm also checking the chat and the Q&A. Um, so far, there are no questions. We can give it another minute or two.
and otherwise we might have a longer break until the next session and thank you for getting up early ryan oh, i think there oh. is something okay. yeah how uh, lubo are asked how long will the release branch be supported i think today's policy is that we follow like um, Kubernetes um, support cycle, and they're they're supporting the branches of one year, right? So three branches, the current one and the two previous ones are supported. And um, I still think there's some vague point that we need to clarify. For example, do we want to lock pages after this time frame of one year, or do we want to still keep them open to permit like you know urgent security fixes to be backported? um or not so that's something to to close until the upcoming release uh, to simply be more specific on it but here i think as we did on many things in the past to look at how, what are we don't do it now uh, and let me finish my sentence so to take the guidance from kubernetes and see how we can align and we're doing, not doing it naively just to be clear um i think the the main reason why looking for kubernetes for so much guidance mainly is to give our users a clear expectation window right if we come up with our own solutions um, then we divert from kubernetes which makes it really difficult for users to understand what's now the support scope for kubert on kubernetes right so by aligning kubernetes it's simply simplifying it for for adopters of kubert to understand that better and actually for adopters as well yeah Luba, i would add that um, i think they're that release matrix discussion that I highlighted it. I think there will be some discussion um, coming up very soon. And, and I think we, we will have more clarity soon on that topic. Yep. Very well. I think uh, we can this a session. Um, unless you have something else, Ryan, you want to raise? No, I've got nothing else. Thank you. Thanks everybody for attending and have a great second day of Kubert Summit. Uh, enjoy the sessions and uh, see you online and on GitHub PRs, I guess. Thank you very much.